This is the first time I think I've had a proper reveal. So I guess when I walk through these doors, I'm gonna hold. Hello, good morning, afternoon, or evening, whenever you're watching this, but it's morning for me, so good morning. We are back from Drift Masters and back to normality. And as you probably can tell from the thumbnail, me and Dave are gonna be continuing our build-off or starting our build-off since we haven't actually done anything to the build-off yet. So, lots of good things happening in this episode. One, my car, I'm not even said anything about this, I don't think, is going for a full color change. So we're going down to Joey O'Neill Autobody and we're gonna be seeing that. I've not seen it, I've not seen any pictures of it. So very much looking forward to that. We also have Two sets of wheels from Driftworks, you might remember from the previous vlog that was teased. We're going to be releasing and putting those on. We have coilovers, we have Stanson, we have other little, little bits to go on. There's going to be quite a lot going to be transformed in this episode. For now, I'm just wandering around the yard because I'm waiting for a Wayne Curran. So until then, enjoy some B-roll of the most ugly car in the world. Creepy. Come on now, we hurry up. You never saw. I've been the, waiting uh, all day. You never looked at my new bra, I mean spoiler. So you missed him. Was we're off modifying cars. Why have you you put a bra in the car? Wayne bras are for girls, this is the man's van. You see the spider on it? You put a <laughs> And it's had to be split. Fantastic. Right, so Joey O'Neill's Autobody. I'm just interrupting this video very briefly just to update you guys on our merch. If you've been on our shop recently or you can see behind me, you will see that we have absolutely nothing. At the LZ Fest, you guys bought absolutely everything. But we are getting a restart for Jap Fest, which is this weekend. And also we're gonna be putting everything that we have online and we're gonna be closing the shop Saturday so that I give you, the guys that are buying stuff online, first dibs on all the designs. And lots of the designs that we've got in have never actually made it to the online store because we've done them, taken them to a show and they've all sold out. So this will be the first chance for people online to actually grab some of these in every size, every style, just everything really. So. Shop's open until Saturday online and then we're shutting it because we've got the show at Jackfest and it's really hard for stock take and everything like that. But it will be opening early next week. So yeah, go check out the shop. So we are down here at O'Neill Auto Body. Wayne's here for the big reveal. Big reveal, yeah. And hello, Joey. How's things? So this was kind of a bit of a win. I, I messaged you thinking that you'd probably say no and then I think before you thought about it, you agreed to it. Yeah, you kind of twisted my arm a little bit, but ah, look, I don't mind the challenge. Sometimes I'm a bit of a sucker for it, so. So what did you have, a week to turn this around? Yeah, a week. We did it in six days. Six days was finished, it was finished Sunday night. But that was six days of 14, 15 hours, 16 hours, so. I'm a bit sleep deprived, but I think you'll be happy. He's still looking all right. Right, I've been looking forward to this for a week. I actually had a dream about it last night and I came in and it was in primer. So I'm hoping it's a bit better. <laughs> it's, a little, it's a little bit further on than primer. Come on, we'll give you a look. All right, let's go. This is the first time I think I've had a proper reveal. So I guess when I walk through these doors, I'm gonna hold. think it would look this good. I don't know, I, I, I did. I, yellow was a great decision. They're such a funky, small little car, funky little colour suits them, do you know what I mean? So, when you said yeah, to be honest, if you'd have told, if you'd have told me to pay me paint of white, I probably would have said no. So this was at the Juice Box barbecue, yeah. and I said that I wanted it yellow, and you kind of sent in from there. It was your idea, I suppose, to do it to, the yellow, the FD, RX-7 comes in. Yeah, so that's, that's the idea behind the yellow. It's supposed to be 
similar-ish, but without the pearl. And then you kind of went off a custom. Yeah, well, I did. I did use the, as a base the yellow without pearl. But the problem was it was a little bit. I don't know, it was a little bit flat. Normally if I'm painting yellow, especially if I'm doing a big job, I'll, I'll put a white sealer down first or a white undercoat and it brightens the colour, but with that it made it look a bit anemic or something. So I actually used a darker sealer on that and I think it darkened it just enough that it's, I don't know, it's almost like Honda Y56, but it's, it's, it's a nice alternative to the pearl because pearls can look a bit dead sometimes. They're nice, but in normal weather, we don't get a lot of sun in Ireland, so in normal weather, I think pearls can look a bit dead, so I think this was a better alternative. I think. I made the executive decision when you were in Poland, so. Yeah, I was gonna say, I, I didn't actually, I sent a rough color code, and then this is what it came out with. But honestly, this came out better than I ever thought it would. Wayne, what's your verdict? Yeah, this is nice, alright. Nice and red. Holy crap. Yeah, and I like red. Wayne, too. you even, is, did you say it's alright? Yeah. You want to leave it in there? I'm actually, I'm actually a bit annoyed that we're revealing it like this, because, we do have some special wheels back, but yeah, not really the wheels that you want to <laughs> reveal this on. Oh my God, you have done an absolutely astonishing job of this. This is actually unreal. I'm fully over the moon with this. Good. I thank you very, 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 very much. Absolutely smashed it. Good stuff. And if anybody wants anything tricky and annoying and awkward, then go down to O'Neill Auto Body and he will be delighted to pick up your call. <laughs> <laughs>
Thursday, probably. So my car, as you guys know, arrived with not much in it, Wayne. So Wayne had to put together, yeah, put the bonnet on it. We put a new wind, the new windscreen installed. We had to put all the trim back on the car. And we haven't cleaned it yet because tomorrow, uh, Trevor from Supreme Balloting is gonna come down and he, it's, it's pretty bad in there now, to be honest. It's, uh, it's grubby. Been in, been in a dusty shed for yeah, about two years. Dusty everywhere, so he's gonna do a full, basically once over on the car. We don't know how the paint's gonna come up. It was painted, but we're kind of questioning how good or bad it's been left since then. However- I think good. And how good or bad Trevor is. Yeah, Trevor will have to be pretty good too. So the idea with this is we're gonna, basically for the next while, Josh's car is now in here. I'm gonna put both cars on the ramps and we've got some exciting parts, which are these. So we've never before had to fit the same set of coilovers to two different cars at the same time. So everything is very strange here. So you guys are probably wondering what direction both of us are going. Josh, as you can see from the start of the video, has gone for a pretty mad, wide arch, crazy show car build, which you can, got some fancy wheels here for, but we'll show you them in a moment. I'm looking forward to seeing them. Yeah. Josh hasn't seen them yet, I've seen them. Um, but we are definitely not gonna do the same to this. So we're gonna basically put this car super low on very nice wheels. We're gonna roll the arches and flare them to get them on. I have a feeling that might crack the paint, I don't think this car is gonna be 100% finished for Jeff Fest because I've ordered a spoiler, spats, and a few other bits and pieces that are not gonna be here in time. But as long as it's sitting low and sitting nice on the wheels, it's got a bit of a clean up, at least we can work on it in the winter. Josh's, I think, will be a bit more complete. However, one thing we are in agreement, and the same part going on both cars, is our BC Racing BR Series coilovers. We've put these on so many cars in the last two years, and I think, you probably agree, Josh, the nicest upgrade for any car you can do because you can go low and still stay comfortable. You can adjust the preload, you can adjust the height separately to everything else, like to the rebound and to how soft or hard they are. And both of these cars have absolutely terrible coilovers on them at the moment. So this is not a case of us saying that we put BCs on because we have tons of money. We already have coilovers on the car and we know how crap these ones are. That's why we're pulling them out and putting BCs on them. Because I honestly think this makes it from a just a show car to a drivable show yeah. car. I mean, everything I have, I have BCs on my brand new Supra and they are 20 times better than the stock suspension. And that was an electronic suspension set up on that car and the BCs are still different. So Wayne is anxious to get the coilovers on. We're gonna open up the box and let's get to it. So this is the most important thing when you wanna build a stancy car is that you've got the full camber adjustment on the front. As you can see, these have camber plates on, so we can actually, if we wanna get a little bit better fitment, we can adjust the front to give it a little bit more positive or negative camber, just to set it up how we want it. Probably negative camber with the width of the wheels we're running, but this is a big uh, advantage because uh, not always do we buy wheels that fit the cars perfectly, and sometimes we need a little camber and a little bit of spacing to make them spot on. I can't wait anymore. I've got to show you the wheels that I've got for my RX-7. So my RX-7 is not going to be perfect paint, perfect anything, but all I wanted from the car was perfect stance. That's why we did the BC Racing coilovers, tidied up the suspension, and now I'm going to show you the wheels. The most iconic set of wheels, and it's an old school JDM style, but I got them brand new. You saw us when we went to Driftworks to collect the Verosa, and we put some tires on them, and they're probably my favorite wheel of all time. So this is a very old school car, so you know, normally put on more modern stuff, we put like the strong wheels and things like that, but this is like a look I'm going for. So uh, without further ado, here they are. You ready? I'm gonna do a little, little reveal around. You ready, Josh? What's a, what's a good reveal behind the van? Behind the van. Here ready? we go. Are you ready? I'm ready. Oh yeah. The classic, the original, the best. Work VS XX's brand new. In sizes that are probably too big for this car, which is why we're doing some arch rolling and stuff, because they are 9.5s ET10s on the front, and they are 18 by 11 ET15 on the back, which is very aggressive for this car. So is this the rear? Uh, that is the rear fronts. So, a little bit of dish on the front, more dish on the back. The stock body. Stock body, yeah. That's fairly aggressive now. It is aggressive. That's why we're going to have to do a little bit of arch rolling, a little bit of heating of the old panels, and a bit of camber just to get these on. But we've also gone for super stretched tires as well. We got those from the tire box. <laughs> these are not uh, 
The usual way tires from the tire box are fitted, they're fitted correctly, but we had to go smaller. So we went a 245 on an 11 on the back, which is pretty stretched. I was going to say, this is not for comfort. No, and then on the front we went with a 215, that's actually, I think. That's even more aggressive. Yeah, the front is pretty aggressive too. So I think there are 215 on the front. So let's see how... I mean, I don't know whether they're going to fit or not. I feel like if they take a bit of work to fit, pardon the pun, they're going to be perfect because you're not going to just slap on a set of wheels with this kind of stance and aggressive fitment without working straight away. But I don't think we're going to need spacers for sure. No. And if they fit and we get the right height right, it'll look amazing. You have outwheeled me here. But well, I mean, I, I went on Driftworks and I looked for the most aggressive offset of a wheel I could find, and they had these in stock for how long? Uh, let me pull in on a little secret about this, this build-off. So Josh and I were given an equal budget to go and build these RX-7s. I blew quite a considerable amount of the budget on another car, which is the S15. So I have less budget than Josh, which means I don't think I'm gonna win this build-off, but then, Stance comes along. You've got them with the wide body with the big wheels. I'm going with more of a stancy OEM look. So it depends what people like more. I the thing is actually two completely different looks. So I would yeah. say that it's going to be whoever likes which look Some more. Some people like the OEM plus stance look with stock body. Some people like the wide body, I would say, kind of all out look. So they're, if I'm not mistaken, they're 18 by 11 ET1. So they're wide, boys. So. Are you ready, Josh? I think I'm ready. Reveal them. Uh, wowzers. Wowzers, wowzers, wowzers. I was only saying, this is like a girl getting the first designer handbag. It is. I've, I've only had JRs and cheap reps and everything like that. And this is, this is the real deal now. I've hit like the big boy league. That is a big boy wheel now. And they're interesting because they're a step lip, but they also have this bit coming out. So like Yeah, like that's really aggressive from there. There's like, so like an goes, inch. Or actually, if you had this as a flat spoke, you can imagine how aggressive they would look because they'd be back where the bolts are. But this allows to give it like, because the ET is zero, your faces come out quite a bit, but your size of wheel is still very large. It's kind of, I really like the fact that it's got the white, the gold, and the step lip chrome because it'll play with the, the yellow, the gold and the yellow. This is the moment of truth. Also, still a job on the sticker, Dave. Yeah, thanks. Hmm. Oh, oh. A little bit of spacer. Oh, I'm getting the first image of how it's going to look. No. That's going to be the one. It's the wrong way of showing it now. It should be down on the ground here showing it. This, this, it. this is just a tease. It's a test. That's one way of doing it. So the handy thing about building two Oryx 7 FCs at exactly the same time is that we can measure from one coilover to the other so the bcs are identical on both cars so i'm going to be running a little bit lower than josh because i want the car to be a bit more stancy fitment but his car has the wide body arches so we can run a bit of a bigger tire and make it look a bit more like a drift car which is the kind of look we're going so far i'm going very stancy he's going very aggressive drift car look i think it's going to work out well so josh is adjusting the coilovers yeah i'm on your previous setting you're on which i thought was you quite thought respectable but my my lip and bumper will be lower, so I think it'll be fine. Yeah, you've got a much lower front because I don't have any aero. Well, for the moment, I don't have any aero. So, handy to adjust? Oh, I'm doing it. So, if, that, you, wanted, if you wanted to know, terrible. if you wanted to know how easy BC Racing coilovers are to fit, Josh can adjust them, so, and I can sort of adjust them too. And you're going to set the ride height. So, on the older coilover, the more you lower the car, the spring gets looser, which means what you don't want happens very quickly. You actually lower the car and the suspension gets softer. So on the BCs, we can actually adjust 
the shock uh, itself without adjusting the spring, meaning we can still keep the spring quite solid and we can then put the dampening to say hard so that even if you're running it super low, the car doesn't bottom out a whole lot. So it's very handy to know. All right, so third time's the charm. Usually on these builds, third time is the charm. Let's see if this, we raise the front five mil back on the, down on the back. Still snug. Pretty snug on the back side. Okay. Dave. Like, accidental perfect stance, I would say. I would say that is that is spot on. I would say we get this first go. You think so? Because you've used mine as a guinea pig. I think this is going to look unbelievable, Josh. Oh. I think nailed it. Nailed it. Apart from, obviously, there needs to be spaces there. Yeah, a little bit of the back, the front is perfect. I would say front is absolutely perfect. Perfect. Look at that. Like, boy. maybe a bit more camber. Is it touching this side? Yeah. Okay, yeah, a little more camber. Little camber you'd, you'd be, like, it would be my choice not to do spacers and, really? to, go, and to go lower, yeah. No, I think. Because if you look at where it's lined I, up. I, I think spacers. If you look where it lined up, it's perfect with the rim. Literally perfect with the rim. So if you lowered it on the back, that would sit just there, perfect with the rim. Again, realis realistically, you would do it for a show, but you wouldn't drive it like that. I want this to be drivable, that's why I put the bigger tires on. Yeah. I'd, I'd, go a little, I'd go a little lower on the back just because it can pop up. Like if you look at it from the side here, Josh, I can see none of the top of your tire on the front and I can see all the top of your tire on the back. So it's definitely much lower on the front, much lower. I would, I would, I'd, I'd, happily happily go, go I'd happily go up five mil. I'd go up five mil on the front, down five mil on the back and leave it fucking square. If, it, if anyone ever wanted an example of wheels make the car, I think both of these have just proved that straight away. All right guys, so it's pretty late. I think we've made good progress today. Thank you to Joey O'Neill, thank you to BC Racing Coilovers, and thank you to Driftworks for all of our bits and pieces on the wheels. Um, obviously the cars look nothing, they're not really finished, they're on wood and all that sort of stuff, but we're gonna leave them here because if we roll them out, it's dark now, we can't take photos anyway. And what we're gonna do, try and start in the morning, getting all the small little pieces. Trevor's gonna be here from Supreme, he's gonna try and buff and polish this whole car and clean it out because it's awful. And then your car needs indicators, it needs all sorts of tidying up spacing and basically making the car work on the road. So there's still a lot of work to do, but I think what we instead of making one big video about the two cars, we decided now to split into two. So yeah, Corvette has to be got ready for Jaff Fest. These two have to be ready for Jaff Fest and another five of our cars, which we're bringing. So a lot going on. So join us on the next episode where we get the two of these outside, see what the transformation looks like out in the daylight, get the Corvette ready for Jaff Fest, and uh, hopefully everything's good.